Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if this is your first time here, I'm Chantal Purcell, and um, it's been just over two months since I was diagnosed with triple negative stage two breast cancer and cancer in one lymph node. So since then, I'm undergoing chemotherapy. I'm three down, five to go is for my treatments, yay. And number four is coming up in a few days, so I'll be at the halfway point, yay. And um, so what else? So since my last video, I have lost all of my hair officially. Um, I have a wig. And, um, but I was gonna talk a little about the hair loss part of it, just for a second. Um, just in the event that you or someone you know is following my footsteps and um, starting chemotherapy, maybe you're a little behind me, I was just gonna share a little of what my personal experience was like. So to back up a tiny bit, I actually chose to, my hair was long like this, um, I chose to go super short before losing my hair for two reasons. Um, one is that I knew I was inevitably going to lose my hair and the idea of losing short clumps versus long clumps, uh, it just seemed like the long clumps would be really traumatic, like more traumatic than the short clumps and I really think that I was right in that. And um, the second reason for that is uh, because I really wanted to choose when I lost my hair and what happened to it. And I knew that by making a decision to cut it sooner would enable me to save and salvage every single strand and donate it to be used for a child's wig. Um, so that's what I did. And um, so then a few days leading up to my actual hair loss, um, I'll talk about that for a second. So uh, a few days beforehand, I started noticing like my scalp was really sensitive. And like when I'd lay on my pillow at night, every little hair kind of felt like a needle poking into my scalp. My scalp was just so sensitive. And I would say for about three nights before um, finally, uh, you know, hair be gone, uh, before that, I just really didn't sleep very well because of that. It was actually keeping me awake, so it was quite uncomfortable. And um, the day before my hair loss day, um, I woke up and honestly, it was like as if a brown dog had slept on my white pillowcase. There were little tiny short hairs everywhere. And I go back to my initial reason for going short and it's like, man, I mean, aside from donating that, I mean, had that been long strands of hair, I mean, that would have been a devastating thing to wake up to. It was kind of hard enough, I mean, being short hairs, but um, sort of reinforced my decision for going short and um, of course donating. So um, if you are following behind me, I would encourage you to do, to do just that, to go short if you're a long hair girl, um, for you and for the point of donation. And uh, you can look to my other videos, kind of get a little more information about how I did that and, and uh, what that day was like. It was really empowering. Um, so I gotta tell you, there's something about, uh, we don't have a choice if we're losing our hair, but we can definitely make some choices about how and when and what's going on with it. So um, yeah, just taking the power back where we're able to. So um, so that was kind of kind of cool. And um, so the day of my hair loss, so that day I actually got up and okay, so have you ever had that like stray hair that like falls on like your arm or your back or whatever and you're like kind of going crazy trying to like find it and get it off of you because it's itchy. Imagine that times like a hundred. I kid you not. So I was like itchy. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna get in the shower, shampoo like all the loose ones and whatever to stop this. So I got in the shower, started shampooing all the loose ones. My shower walls were coated with hair. The hair just kept coming, like there, there wasn't an end to the loose ones. My drain was starting to, my little tub strainer thing was like starting to clog up. I'm like, oh my gosh, so like this isn't, this isn't good. This isn't gonna be how this is gonna happen. So I like rinsed off, needed to kind of regroup. So I grabbed my mom, went for a little stroll down the street, got some fresh air, kind of um, wrapped my head around what needed to happen, like right then. It was time, so I came back home and my amazing husband did what no husband should ever have to do when he shaved his bride's head. So I'm sorry, it makes me a little emotional. Um, he sat me in a bar stool in the kitchen and got his clippers out and he shaved, um, shaved my hair like all the way down. 
and uh, I didn't look, I didn't watch anything that was being done and I'm a little OCD so he waited until it was like all, all like uniform and not patchy or whatever before you know kind of doing my reveal and um, I gotta tell you guys there's something so everybody talks about battling cancer right there's something that makes you feel especially badass battling cancer with a bald head I mean like I don't even know what to say. I mean, like, I wouldn't mess with me. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, you look at me now and I'm kind of like a girly girl kind of thing for sure. But uh, when I see myself in the mirror for the first time and I'm bald and I'm battling cancer, it was just kind of something about that visual uh, that seemed uh, empowering and kind of appropriate for the situation. So, um, so there was that. And, uh, <sighs> Every day since then is, um, you know, I've just kind of gotten a little more used to the reflection that I see in the mirror. And um, I'm gonna kind of talk to, um, talk to everybody. I mean, like, so I'm a hair girl. I've been a hair girl my whole life. My mom says I came into this world with a head full of hair. Um, I have pictures of like this big long section like curled into a thingy on top of my head. Like, um, I actually broke up with a boy in seventh grade because he tried to mess up my hair. <laughs> And thanks to Facebook, we're actually friends again. And uh, that's kind of a funny thing. But yeah, I mean, I was just really all about um, my hair and that sort of identifying. And that's kind of what I'm saying is I'm speaking to any of you who maybe can relate to whatever it is that we identify, like looking in the mirror, we identify with being ourselves. Like for me, my hair was a big deal. I mean, it was like part of my identity. And I'm guessing that there's people out there that you guys can relate to what I'm saying. And um, the idea, someone have ever, had ever told me that, you know, you're gonna have to be bald. I mean, I would have been like, there's no way I could actually handle that. You know, it's just not doable. And I gotta tell you that it's shocking how quickly we can adapt and sort of refocus. And um, that's, uh, that's kind of been an eye opener for me. Um, I made a couple of notes because I mentioned in one of my videos that there's a thing called chemo brain and you have a hard time remembering things and um, that's definitely true. So um, anyway, I decided, you know, I mean, my life and my confidence, um, it, I mean, none of it can be, I mean, it, it just can't revolve around my hair or some kind of outside, um, outside thing. I mean, some kind of external thing. I can't. Uh, base my confidence or my identity on the fact of you know whether or not I have hair if it's long it's, if it's short if it's blonde if it's gone you know whatever I mean I just can't do that and um, so with that said I um, never would I ever have thought I would be bald and never would I ever have thought that I would um, kind of be bold and brave and have the courage to reveal my bald head like publicly but that is exactly what I'm actually gonna challenge myself to do right now and um, kind of do like a little reveal so here we go um, the wig is really come in handy and it's kind of like a little safety net but um, you know, I mean like, so here I am. I'm boldly bald before the world and I'm okay. Like my pulse is still going, it's beating a little faster, but um, I'm still alive. I'm still exactly who I was a couple of seconds ago and nothing really changed except the, you know, like this or not this. Um, I will definitely wear my wigs, uh, which I have a couple. I'll wear wigs in public merely for the fact that I don't wanna be stared at. I mean, when you are, a female and you have a shaved or bald head, I mean, it, it definitely attracts attention. And usually people with the assumption that you're sick, that you have cancer. And I, uh, probably the last thing I want is anyone to look at me with pity or um, feel sorry for me for being sick because I mean, like that's just kind of not my mentality. I've got something that I'm going through, but you know, everybody has hurdles. Everybody's got their things that they're going through and I don't look at them, you know, in pity. Um, theirs just isn't quite as maybe obvious as mine would be if I had my wig off. So, um, so this kind of brings up an interesting thing is that I want to do something that I haven't done yet before is I would love to poll you guys. I want to 
ask you to dig deep and kind of share, if you'll be so bold, um, what is it that you would be fearful of letting go of? Like, what what is it maybe that you consider to be a big part of your identity? Is it, um, gosh, I don't know, I mean, is it your hair, is it your looks, is it your wardrobe, your car, your house, your job, your status? Um, something like that. I mean, I would love to hear your input and I would love for us united to create a um, sort of like a safe and supportive environment to talk about some life issues. And um, we've talked before about depression. I would love some feedback on that video if you um, would like to go check that out. Talk about your personal situations or maybe a friend or someone you know. And uh, but for this, I really invite you to open up. I really wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear your questions. And, um, and if you're interested in my videos, I would love to, um, I invite you to please just, you know, if there's something you'd like to um, talk about that you'd like for uh, me to talk about, please post that below. I'm gonna read every single comment and I'll respond to everyone. And um, because that's kind of it. So the moral of the point of me doing any of these videos, it's not about me, it's not about cancer. It's about all of us living our best life. And uh, we all have hurdles. Some are bigger, <laughs> some are bigger than others. And um, you know, but it's like, we get over these hurdle guys. And, um, but the point being is while we're jumping over the hurdles, that's our journey. Those hurdles are our journey. And if not for the hurdles, if not for um, the valleys that we go through, we would never actually know when we arrive at the, at the peak of the mountain. So, um, Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough and just want you all to know that you, um, uh, your support is greatly appreciated. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to please do that because it um, sort of encourages me to continue making these videos. I see a lot of people liking them and watching them, but I would just love for you to subscribe to my channel to kind of reiterate that I do have that support from you guys and that I should continue making these videos and um, kind of just for the benefit of spreading um, good life message uh, messages about living our best life. So until next time, my friends, my door is always open, my heart is always open, and um, oh, I always do that. I say I'm gonna leave, and I, um, but I have one more thing based on what, <laughs> what we're seeing here today. Um, oddly enough, like twice in the last like two days, I had the same scripture, um, show up in various in two different places and uh what i could never tell you where it is in the bible but it's there it is um so it says everything we see with our eyes is temporary everything we don't see with our eyes is eternal so just you know something to ponder until next time so um until next time i'm gonna like pull my plug and say goodbye thank you guys for your support for your love for your encouragement and um, go live your best life. Thanks.